Wie können die Preise für Wärmepumpen nachhaltig gesenkt werden? Ist die Technik schon soweit? Und was bewirken flexible Stromtarife, wenn es darum geht, die eigenen Stromkosten zu senken? Diese spannenden Fragen bildeten den zweiten Teil unserer Session auf der diesjährigen DLD-Konferenz in München. Zu Gast waren Sarah Müller von Zola, Sophia Rödiger von 1,5 Grad und Bastian Girol von Octopus Energy. Teil 1 sowie das gesamte Video haben wir euch in der Endcard und in der Videobeschreibung verlinkt. So, now moving to heat pumps, that's the second opportunity. Um, here we have a similar situation. I mean, depending on your home, you, you have to invest. I think there are different numbers out there. So maybe also, Bastian, from your background now, specifically on heat pumps, is there opportunity to get that really down? Because, I mean, uh, 15, 20K, so in a, a round range where it's broad, affordable, affordable and, and, and consumers really buy it, not, as, as you mentioned, out of a motive uh, uh, or motivation for climate change, but really commercially or economically? Yes, the answer is yes. First of all, we haven't yet sold a system for 40 to 60K. We're way below that. We're usually at the moment below 30,000 uh, here in Germany. Um, but that is still too expensive. The, the interesting thing about heat pumps are that they are in fact magical. The interesting thing about the heat pump is that if you take one unit of electricity, you can generate up to three units of heat. Generally burning stuff like gas, oil or wood, you if even only will get a one to one ratio. So one unit of burning a thing to one unit of heat. A fun fact to, to that is if you would power a heat pump by gas, it would still be more efficient to heat your home than just a gas boiler. Looking at the heat pump itself, the, it has only one problem at the moment, and that is price. The technology itself, to install it in customers' homes, is quite expensive. Um, and we need to get that down. Our mission at Octopus Energy is exactly that. We need to make heat pumps affordable for every home, um, and we need to make it price competitive to other heating technology in the market. If we can get the energy cost down um, to power the heat pump, which at the moment is also too expensive. In Germany and a lot of other countries, there's too high a taxation on energy costs in comparison to other energy costs. If we just bring that down, again, the heat pump is more efficient, more cost effective uh, to heat your home. Now, the other factors are um, that if you have a heat pump that is smarter, that knows uh, the thermodynamics of your home that knows how long it takes to heat your home, how long your home will retain heat, and also knows how the grid operates, how abundant energy is in a given point in time, that knows how cheap and green energy is, it can create a schedule for heating your home that again is more efficient. And we're pushing this 300% um, increase to heating to maybe 500%. What we've done at Octopus with our R&D center is investing into the technology itself and bringing down that cost. Um, we've produced our own heat pump, which is the Cozy 6, um, and we're launching this now in Great Britain and installing it in homes. Um, in average in Great Britain, um, because of different factors, uh, after subsidies, a heat pump will run you 15,000 pounds. We can now sell our Cozy for roughly 3,000 pounds after subsidies. So the goal here needs to be to make a heat pump price comparative uh, or competitive to a gas boiler. And then the economics of the heat pump was just, there's no question anymore if this is the technology of the future. It's about education and also explanation in the field, right? Um, because yes, one dimension is the technology and the research and how we can improve also um, all the devices. But at the end, also explaining the user or at the end, the, uh, the household, you can also use it for air condition, for example. So there are additional usage moments, so to say, of the heat pump and also for storage. And now and back to my first statement, you always need to observe your entire energy system as a holistic system. And um, if you steer it in a smart way and you use storage and that moment of intelligent heating, but also um, the cooling um, feature, then you can really save money at the end. Today with our um, smart charging tariff, uh, we call it intelligent octopus, cu customers can save uh, up to 360 euros per year um, on their energy bill when they're charging their car with our tariff. The way it works is also very customer friendly with the fact that they need to do little, if anything. All you need to do is come home with your car, plug it in, 
you define at what point you want the car to be charged, and we take care of everything behind that. Our technical system will create a charging schedule that is optimized to how much energy is available, how green it is, how cheap it is to get the best price out of it. Um, and we sort of forward the savings to the customer in a very fixed set so the customer knows exactly what they will be getting out of it. Important point, um, especially the fear of if you have dynamic in your tariffs, right, um, there can be always a very high moment. Um, this is, for example, also how we reacted with our um, tariff, dynamic pulse, this is called, uh, f um, with 1,5 degree. Um, we have a guarantee that you will never pay more than 15 cent per kilowatt hour. It depends on um, your nets and gates. Um, so this is definitely something uh, which, but here all providers have the issue right now with um, increasing uh, prices. Um, yeah, but this is exactly uh, what a bit different um, in our dynamic parts or in our tariff is that, again, we have uh, the focus on the entire energy system with heat pumps, solar storage and heartbeat as energy management system. And what we do here is, um, of course, you have what I said earlier, a mixed calculation of your solar price um, and their own produce, so to say, a power. And then um, the moment where you need, because for example, sun is not shining and you need to buy um, energy. This is often the moment where everyone is buying energy because everyone is coming home, is charging the car, for example. And this is exactly what Heartbeat, the energy, man energy, um, energy manager is now steering, that you, for example, wait that 6 p.m. is not the best time, but 4 um, o'clock in the night, for example. And this is when the uh, intelligence is then active and um, is activating, for example, the wall box. And now you will charge because now, right now you have negative energy prices on the stock market, on the energy stock market. And this is exactly what we do with shifting the, um, so to say, the need when people need um, energy in the moment um, or in the so to say, window in the slot when it's really the best and the cheapest. Excellent. So, so basically, uh, it helps the consumers. It helps also the climate because you use the wind turbines and, and, and the power we export for free or need to pay uh, other countries. We are we are using that and, and giving it back, so to say, to the consumers, the, the benefits. Exactly. And of course, at the end, it is... Um, Again, the collaboration of everyone. You need um, extended grids, right? And also power here, more and more on, on offshore and so on. But it's also important that we focus more and everyone is doing that on residential for the decentralization of yeah, the sources, right? Um, and the storage. The thing is with these technologies, if you only have one of them, um, you're never getting the whole potential of the system. So you kind of need to go towards the entire system, but then you over effectively get um, a return on that. If you look at the debate, it's a lot of investment. And I think it's exactly what we heard also in the panel yesterday, what we need to make it clear to consumers that actually it's about savings. So I think if you have a solar system that is connected to a heat pump and an EV, you will save up to 60K in the long run. And the system runs for 20 to 30 years. And we always talk a lot about the initial investments, what does it take to get this system? And I think that's also what the consumers are super worried about or helping climate change will cost me money, but at the end of the day, it will be the right thing to do, but it will also save you money. And I think that's exactly the debate we need to have.